Hello everyone, I'm Alicia Healy, candidate for the Ohio Senate 15th District. I want to thank God for the opportunity to live in this free country and to speak to you about the colorblindness of American liberty. I think it is important for each of us, no matter what our ethnic background, to learn the history of America's founders so that we can connect with and have an appreciation for the great gift they have given us. First of all, it must be stated, our founders were devout Christians. They were not narrow-minded religionists. They were learned, inquiring, and scientific men. They were free-thinking Christians who believed that liberty for all was the fruit of true Christianity. Patrick Henry said, it cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians not on religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. For this reason, people of other faith have been afforded asylum, prosperity, and freedom of worship here. Their Christianity also inspired them to resist tyranny as the townspeople of Marlborough, Massachusetts declared in 1774, death is more eligible than slavery. A freeborn people are not required by the religion of Jesus Christ to submit to tyranny, but may make use of whatever means God has placed within their power to recover and support their laws and liberties. We implore the ruler above the skies that he would make bare his arm in defense of his church and people and let Israel go. In resisting tyranny, they understood that the necessary requirement for liberty to exist is the limitation of government power. For what is the difference between the ruler and the slave, but that one has unchecked power over the other? The founders were also very clear about where their liberty came from. That's right, it comes from God in the form of individual inalienable rights. Alexander Hamilton described it this way, the sacred rights of mankind are not to be rummaged for among dusty parchment and old books, but are written as with a sunbeam on the whole volume of human nature by the hand of divinity itself and cannot be expunged by mortal powers. And they were not ashamed to declare who, the, who that divine author of rights of mankind might be. The committees of correspondence passed up and down the colonies, the rallying cry, no king but King Jesus. For he is the only absolute ruler, the sovereign, and his rule is benevolent. But the rule of man is harsh and cruel. His command is proclaimed liberty throughout the land unto all inhabitants thereof. Did you know that this scripture in Leviticus 25.10 is inscribed on the Liberty Bell? It was the Christian principles of America's founders that led them to declare their creed that all men are created equal. Let's see how they did in living up to it. Many men and women of that generation suffered greatly and made incredible sacrifices. And many gave their lives in the cause of liberty. Anyone who dared to be a patriot risked their life. You have heard of men like Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Franklin, and Hamilton. But there were thousands upon thousands of other lesser known or unknown patriots of that generation that fought for liberty and gave their lives in its defense. Many of our ancestors came from many different countries of the world, including Africa, which is where my ancestors originated. Most crossed the sea in search of liberty. My ancestor came to this country in ships with shackles on their hands and feet. But did you know that thousands of these black Americans fought for the Patriot cause in the War for Independence? Let me introduce you to some of the black Patriots of the American Revolution. Crispus Attucks stood side by side with other American Patriots who were gunned down by the British troops in what became known as the Boston Massacre. It was a leading event rallying American colonists toward resistance and independence. In 1781, the Battle of Groton Heights, after suffering heavy casualties against the British, 
the Americans ran out of ammunition and began using bayonets, pikes, and their rifles as clubs. Major Montgomery, a British officer leading the attack, was speared and killed by Jordan Freeman, a black patriot, an act that was witnessed by other American patriots. He then received numerous bayonet wounds and died nobly. There is a memorial plaque at Fort Griswold honoring him. Prince Whipple was a slave of William Whipple, a signer of the Declaration and a general in the Continental Army. Seeking courageous soldiers to mount an attack on the British, he appealed to his servant to fight with him bravely, to which Prince Whipple replied, Sir, I have no inducement to fight, but if I had my liberty, I would endeavor to defend it to the last drop of my blood. The general freed him on the spot. Prince Whipple crossed the Delaware with Washington. He served as a soldier throughout the war, fought many important battles, and even served as an aide to General Washington. Other American patriots like James Amistad, Peter Salem, and Lemuel Haynes understood that the cause of American liberty was worth fighting for. Although many were slaves, they believed freedom would come to all. Their brave example shows us that liberty knows no color. Many of the founding fathers wanted to abolish slavery from the beginning of the revolution. They considered it an abomination, a curse they inherited from the empires of Europe from which they had fled. The Puritans of New England never condoned it. The middle colonies wanted to see it done away. But a few colonies in the Deep South held strongly to this great sin and were unwilling to bend. The vote for independence had to be unanimous, so any holdouts on this issue would destroy the whole effort. Jefferson Clause and the Declaration harshly condemning slavery did not pass and had to be scratched. But a few years later, he would be instrumental in seeing to it that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude should be permitted in the Northwest Territory, from which Ohio became the first state. The curse of slavery never stained the soil of Ohio. Aren't you glad? This is free soil. In 1787, the framers of the Constitution again had the chance to end slavery. George Mason called for cessation of the slave trade and it was halted in 1808. But they would not abolish it outright. The Deep South resisted again and our founders compromised. Governor Morris of Pennsylvania condemned it as the curse of heaven. Elbridge Gerry of Massachusetts predicted civil war. The cotton gin was invented and slavery became more prosperous and grew. Old sins are hard to break, but God had other plans for our republic. Some 70 years later, he would give us a bloody civil war and would purge our land of this curse of slavery forever. The prayers of my people were heard, who would steal away to the woods for secret prayer and Bible meetings, enduring whippings if caught. But as Lincoln said, if it had to be that each drop of blood drawn with the lash shall be paid for by another drawn with the sword, the judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Now we've come down to this current day when a new kind of tyranny threatens to reduce us all to slaves. It is a tyranny of big government which seeks to regulate our every move. All Americans must now decide whether we will rise and fight as our forefathers did. And whether or not we will fight together. Will we fulfill our destiny to be that shining city on a hill, that light to the nations? America has held forth that torch of liberty, calling people from every quarter of the earth. Keep ancient lands, your story pump, cry she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. These words of Emma Lazarus are inscribed on the Statue of Liberty. Let us keep that lamp burning, but first we must see our folly, 
our wickedness and how we have fallen away from the God of our fathers. We must heed the words of 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, then I will heal their land. What is America's great sin today? Is it not that we permit the murder of the unborn child for our own convenience and call it a woman's choice, birth control, or family planning? Is this not a great offense in the sight of Almighty God? Unless we fight to see this stopped as slavery was stopped and many other national sins, he will not spare us. So let us march into battle united in the cause of our great God and restore America. For he has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never sound retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift my soul to answer him. Be jubilant my feet. Our God is marching on. Thank you and may God restore America.